Hi everyone, Neil Wilcoxon here. Today we're gonna to be talking about a video editor for Linux called Shotcut. I believe it's also available for Windows and Macs. You can check out those links down in the description below. But before I start talking about the editor, I wanted to start talking about my experience with editing and the different programs I've used. So I started out with Windows Movie Maker, but soon moved on to Adobe Premiere. I've used both Elements and Premiere Pro. Uh, I prefer Premiere Pro, but their subscription model is getting a little bit expensive. I've also used Final Cut Pro 6 and 7, and I tried to use 10, but I wasn't a huge fan of the interface. I've also attempted to learn Avid, but that program's a little bit different of an editing style, and I like the one where you can just drag things wherever you want, and it's not as particular. Uh, lately, I've been using Sony Vegas, running on Windows. That's an older consumer version, but it's actually pretty similar between the different versions, so. I can say I have some experience there. So given my experience, I thought I'd go ahead and outline a few things that I was searching for, the main one being native H.264 support. I want to be able to take the files from my camera, drop them in the timeline, and start editing. I don't want to create proxy files, and I don't want to have to render everything. I might accept rendering a couple of effects here and there, but I don't want to have to render the files themselves without any effects applied. So in order to achieve this, what I was searching for is graphics hardware acceleration and Shotcut seemed to offer this, so that's why I'm trying it out first. So just for context, let me go ahead and give you the specs of the computer I'm running this on. This is a 2013 Razer Blade 14 inch. It has a quad core Intel Core i7 running at 2.2 gigahertz. For the graphics, it's got an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 765M. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, and I'm booting directly into Linux Mint 18, so no virtual machines here. And for reference to previous editors that I've used, this computer can play back 1080p H.264 in Premiere Pro and most of the effects that I have applied to it in real time. Now let's go ahead and launch up Shotcut. If you're anything like me, you'll look at the words that are on the screen here and read Shortcut. And you'll be wondering what the heck that was a shortcut to. No, it is not a shortcut. In fact, it is your editor Shotcut. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the window layout. You'll notice that everything starts closed. So let's go ahead and open a few things up here. Something that bothered me a little bit is that you can't get separate preview and program monitors. They both open up into the same window here and you still get most of the functionality, but you can't really view things side by side. So that's a disadvantage. Now let's go ahead and talk about the editing experience. While I was editing one video on Shotcut, I noticed that it was very bare bones. There's no extra buttons here and that could be good for you if you haven't had very much experience with editing. Now let's talk about getting your clips into the timeline. You can start with them in the playlist here and then open them up in the shared preview and program monitor and you can even set in and out points. Once you start dragging clips into the timeline, you'll notice that there is some sort of snapping, but it's not nearly as intuitive as Final Cut and Premiere, and sometimes you're gonna have to turn that off in order to get the desired results. As you continue editing, you'll notice that the only real transition is cross dissolve. You can achieve that by dragging two clips on top of each other, and there's not very many options here. Normally I wouldn't mind the lack of transitions, but there's not even a keyframe feature to make transitions on your own, so that leaves you with limited options. I should note that they do advertise a way to get more transitions on their website, but I wasn't able to get any of those methods to work, so I was stuck with cross dissolve. Now that you've got your clip sequencing roughly in order, you might want to add some text. Now you can't add it as a standalone generated object, you have to add it as an effect to an existing clip. This led me to make most of my graphics in an external program and bring them in as images. However, the text editor does look promising as it uses HTML to generate the text. Now let's talk about filters. There are actually quite a few, including a chroma key, which I like to see. Now the method of application is a bit difficult. First of all, you can only apply filters directly to the clips. There's no null layers or anything that I can find like that. So it makes it difficult to apply to multiple clips. It looked like there was gonna be copy and paste functionality where I could copy a filter from one clip, say a color corrector, and paste it on all the clips that were the same, but that didn't end up working, and I ended up having to set a preset and then manually click each clip and set it to that preset. It was better than having to set every single setting individually, but it was still pretty inconvenient. When you're editing, of course, there'll be a lot of playback going on, and Shotcut does pretty well in this area. When you hit play, it takes a couple of frames to catch up and then it's more or less real time. This works pretty well. Where it really falls flat though is in those JKL operations where you're trying to fast forward, rewind, or play at a different speed than real time. 
shot cut just couldn't keep up and when I hit the space bar to stop at a particular point, it didn't stop right away, so that wasn't great. So far all the video features of Shotcut haven't been that bad, but the real disaster is in audio. So you can have multiple audio tracks, but mixing between them is a challenge. First of all, the audio levels are inconsistent, so even when the audio meter didn't show the audio going over, when I went around to export it, audio would be clipping and it would sound horrible. Also, in reference to the multiple layers things, when I faded between multiple layers, there are often audio glitches in the exported file, and that's just unacceptable. Now that you've struggled through editing, it's time to export. Thankfully, Shotcut has a lot of export options, thanks to its integration with FFmpeg. I really appreciated this, and I was able to find a good preset for my YouTube uploads. Once you configure all the export settings and hit that button, you're in for a pretty short export time. I was able to export a six minute clip with color corrector on every single frame, and that came out in just under 20 minutes. That's pretty similar to what Premiere did on this system, so I'm certainly not complaining. One drawback of the export process is that you don't get a time remaining, you just get a percentage. But you are able to work in the editor while it's exporting, so that makes it kind of like Final Cut Pro 10. So that's Shotcut. Ultimately, I was able to make a video on it, but it took a lot longer than I would have liked. Even if I get more familiar with it over time, there are certain operations that just take way too many clicks to get done. So that leaves me looking for another video editor. In the meantime, I'll be using Sony Vegas, but be sure to leave a suggestion down in the comments below. Also be sure to subscribe and like this video if you liked it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys again soon.